Okay, my friends, it doesn't get any better than this. As you know, I've been talking about membranes that separate different layers of tissue. And invasion of those membranes causes invasive cancers and every kind of disease. Well, they're claiming now that they have discovered a protein capable of keeping human cells healthy. Proteins live in this fluid-filled highway that I have been speaking about. That's why they can keep things healthy. Now, let's see what they have discovered, and I will show you why this fluid-filled highway membrane is, is your immune system. It keeps you from being invaded from this way, and it keeps your good tissue from poking out through the other side. It's a membrane, and as a matter of fact, I have all kinds of pictures and details on this. Let me just explain the whole thing to you. Hold on. Okay, the reason this is so important is because they understand the function of these proteins and so forth. And we know where the proteins come from. They come from bacteria. I'll show you that in a second. But they never knew where they lived. This is their this is their habitat, right? And this is a fluid filled layer. That's why these enzymes and proteins can shoot through your body very quickly and and attack invaders and all kind of pus comes out and everything else. There's a whole batch of them attack the attackers, but they have to get there somehow. This is, this is the troop transport. It's it's the uh, fluid filled highway. And that's how they go. They have a little flagella on them, like little propellers. Zip, zip, zip. Okay, my outstanding friends, this is going to be really interesting. I, this is about health and about the membranes, and those literally are the immune system. And they now found a new protein. And let me explain to you what a protein is, how it's produced, where it lives, and what does it do to protect you. I've been posting about this for years now, about this one particular layer in your body. It's called the interstitium. It's a fluid-filled highway that contains all of these chemicals that protect you. So let's look at that. It's very simple. Don't get intimidated by this. It's very, very simple. It's just that this layer has never been understood. It didn't even know it existed until a couple of years ago. And it takes a long time for doctors to catch up with this. So let me show you what the research shows. And then I hope some doctors will ask some questions. I'll be perfectly comfortable answering what I understand about the physiology here, about the actual chemical reactions, where these bacteria live, what they produce, what does the product end up being, how does it react in the body, what is it used for, what are the, the molecular interactions, the atomic interactions, the nucle nucleophilic reactions. This is it's deep, but it's not hard to understand. It's really not hard to understand, so stick with me. All right, so they discovered this new protein, and they're studying it, I believe, outside the body. They call it in vitro, in a cell dish, and they're watching what happens when these chemical interactions happens between the proteins and the bacteria and, and so forth. Now, this says human cells showing cell nuclei of this color here, um, mitochondria and the coexlaw Bernetti protein, which is this beneficial protein. The figure evidence evidences the co-location of this molecule with cellular mitochondria, well, whatever that means. But they're showing that there's a reaction going on there. Let's just think about it that way. And the researchers have discovered a previously unidentified protein. And the proteins are only created by bacteria. That's the only thing they can create them. Bacteria, as this, this, this certain bacteria creates them. All proteins in your body and enzymes are the product of bacteria. Bacteria can be damaged in your body, and antibiotics damage probiotics, the good bacteria. They been damage them both. So they have some that are pretty well targeted, but not, not that well targeted. So you're going to have, if you take 
antibiotics, it's more than likely going to cause some damage to your probiotics. So you need to replace those original probiotics. Now, once your system gets out of balance, it's, it's kind of a mess. What you need to do is to be able to get a sample of this interstitial fluid wherever you're having the issue. And you got to get it from the organ that you're having the issue with, uh, you know, if it's cancer, let's say. Or it might be just a general immune response, you just feel terrible all the time. Then you might be able to just extract it from the lymph fluid or from just the blood. Um, but you need to find out what proteins you're dealing with and what are, and bacteria and what's missing. There's going to be a profile of healthy people that are going to have all these different bacteria, and then they're going to be basically immune from whatever is going to try to invade you. That bacteria will protect you, and that bacteria will also break down the food that you're eating so that you'll be able to digest it correctly. You won't have constipation. You won't have diarrhea. You won't have all this nasty stuff going on in your stomach and gas and bloating and nausea and vomiting or any of that stuff. You'll be you'll just keep eating and having a good time. I mean, it's just, it's as simple as that. If the bacteria is there doing its job, that's what it's there for. And now it's got to live in a certain place. Well, where does it live? You don't want to just floating around doing nothing. You got to have it where it's supposed to be. And every organ is going to want to have its own type of bacteria. Why? Because every organ has different chemistry. That's what they're there for. That's what they're there. Your kidneys don't do the same thing as your heart does. Your pancreas doesn't do the same thing as your liver. Your gallbladder, you know, your tonsils, appendix, appendix, everything. Everything has its own set of chemistry, which requires its own set of bacteria to make the enzymes and the protective stuff. And it all resides in the layers, which are membranes. All right, so let's get started. This is important because they're, they're finally coming around to understand this. But if they study this outside the body, they're missing the whole, the whole reason that these things are around is to live in this fluid-filled highway and be able to float around real quick through your body and attack things. All right, just listen to this. Bacteria, well, better said, bacteria are factories to produce enzymes. The enzymes are the end product, they're the chemistry. I'm going to go through it in detail. When the right bacteria are present in the right quantities, in the right conditions, they produce enzymes. Enzymes is what we're looking for. Those are the chemical catalysts that make things happen just like that. And they make them much more economically than they can make them by, you know, some kind of chemistry they use. They're all thinking about making money. I'm thinking about what is the bacteria? How does it produce? Where does it live? How does it function? How does the enzyme get built? The bacteria's DNA has the code and every single bacteria strain produces an exact type of molecule which is called the enzyme. It has to be exactly identical every time or it does not work. And when it does work, it works. All right, let me just read you. This is very, very simple. It'll go quickly. Don't worry. This We're talking about free radicals. What are their properties, their sources, their targets, the implication in various diseases? Free radicals. Remember that. Free radicals and other oxidants, this is oxidation states, have gained importance in the field of biology due to their central role in various physiological conditions as well as their implication in a diverse range of diseases, every disease. The free radicals, both the reactive oxygen species, ROS, reactive oxygen species, and reactive nitrogen, species, RNS. So those two different molecules have something that reacts to your biology. And they are derived from both endogenous sources, which is mitochondria, perioxomes, endoplasmic reticulum, phagocytic cells, etc. And exogenous sources, so it's, it's, you get them from everything, let's just put it that way. You can get these different reactive species. Now, 
transition metals, industrial solvents. It's anytime you do biology, you're going to end up with reactive species. It just happens. Free radicals can adversely affect various important classes of biological molecules, such as nuclei and uh, nucleic acids, lipids, proteins, that's your whole body, thereby altering the normal redox status. A redox status means an equilibrium between good and bad reactive species. And apparently, you have to have some good ones and you have to have some bad ones because they are reactive. They do reactions. They make reactions happen. So if you have too much of this, you can't get any of that happening. If you don't have any, you have too much of this, you can't get any of that happening. It's got a balance. So this, these free radicals can adversely affect various important classes of molecules and every every different type of class of molecules depending upon where it is in your body it can be affected differently that's why there's over 200 types of cancers all right so it affects all these different things all right and, and it changes that normal reaction status it leads to increased oxidative stress too much oxygen all right Free, uh, free radical oxygen. So the free radicals induced oxidative stress has been reported to be involved in several disease conditions such as diabetes, diabetes mellitus, de neurodegenerative disorders, Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, cardiovascular, respiratory disease, cataract, <laughs> I mean it's everything. A hundred percent of you is affected by having problems with reactive oxygen species. How do you keep the reactive oxygen species from attacking you? Well, let's think about it. Okay, this is uh, interesting and concerning. This certain type of bacteria, they, they say, this doctor says, basically we discovered a strategy used by this extremely deadly bacteria to keep cells healthy for longer while replicating intensely. So normally the cells die right away. Like with, um, I forget what it was, uh, there's another disease in 24 hours that all the cells are dead. And this can go on for a week replicating and it has some way of saying to the cell, don't die, give us a week so that we can replicate inside of you and make a whole ton of us. Because you can get sick from one single cell of this. Hold on one second. Yeah, here it is right here. This particular protein is a little living cell and it says the interest of studying this bacterium, this single-celled bacteria, in depth lies precisely in its ability to subvert cell functions. All right? Unlike other bacteria which cause disease only when they multiply to reach large numbers, all right, you don't get a disease, they're, they're okay, you, you, you keep them at bay. This particular thing is so deadly, a single C. Bernetis is enough to make a healthy person sick. One single cell. And the reason is, the interesting aspect of this, he added, is that it replicates in cells for about a week. So it keeps growing and growing and growing and growing and growing, more of them, and, and it's tell the cell, don't die. Don't die. Give us a week. In comparison, salmonella causes severe food poisoning, causes the death of the host cells in less than 24 hours. So they're saying, wow, there's something in there that allows this deadly cell to tell the host cell to stay alive. Well, they want to use that to make us stay alive longer, is what they're saying. Now, I don't know if they're right or not, but I can tell you they're taking it from something that's extremely deadly. I would be very, very careful that it doesn't subvert itself back one way or the other because these things mutate all the time. I don't know if um, this bacteria will or not, but in a, every single type of bacteria, this C. Bernetti not just, just doesn't just do one thing. It pr creates all kinds of stuff. As all bacteria do, there's like oh, there's deadly strains of that certain bacteria, and then there's healthy strains of it. It seems to be that that's how the, how it works. All right, there's something in cells that's called apoptosis, 
and it's programmed cell death. When it sees that there's so much nastiness going on inside of the cell, somehow it says, all right, let's just die and get this over with. Well, this Cibernetti allows that cell to go away from that programming. So here's what they say. Observing this Cibernetti or Bernetti is a good way to learn how cells function. In the case of this study, it helped us understand how to treat mitochondrial dysfunction. That's really in the powerhouse of the cell. And provided insights on programmed cell death. That's the apoptosis in humans. So they're looking at, you know, I don't know, if it's coming from the same source, I'd be a little careful. This stuff is, sounds like it's pretty damn deadly. All right. So they're studying it. I wouldn't be running out shooting it into my body yet, I'll tell you that. All right, this is the fluid-filled highway. There's protein channels that only allow certain things to go this way and certain things to go this way. You've got glycolipids and then you've got glycoproteins. All right, one of them attracts one way and one of them attracts another way. This is an interaction between like uh, the layer above and the layer below and this keeps the two separated. All right, if this is breached, that's when you get sick. And here's what happens when you get sick, you get cancer. And what are we breaching? This layer right here. You see this? You can get cancer down to here, and it's not really cancer at this point. Well, yes, I guess they call it stage one, two, three, four. This is four. When it gets through the very last layer of your interstitium, then it, it feeds off of you and it just grows like crazy. But up until this layer, you should be able to deal with it. Your, your bacteria and enzymes should be able to come out and kill that thing. That's what it's all about, your immune system. That is it right there. Once it gets through, it's all over. 200 types of cancers. Why? This layer is not the same. On my lungs, my heart, my liver, my kidneys, my pancreas, gallbladder, every single organ has a specific type of membrane because that specific chemistry protects the specific chemistry that that organ has to deal with. So now, if this, the bacteria that's in here is dead, and you get one of these nasty little buggers that can get in, and it'll just go right through there. They say one cell can go through and once it's inside you're, it's all over it's going to repopulate like crazy and I guess it's it very deadly they're having some terrible deadly outbreaks of it it's in agricultural but this stuff jumps around so I wouldn't be too excited that it is not in the uh, human population yet because who knows <laughs>